Yo, what's happening gang? Welcome to your 10th REST API tutorial and in this video I want to talk about error handling. So in the last tutorial we put together this handler for post requests and we said we wanted to create a new record with the data that they sent us, okay, then send that data back. However, when we tried to create a post request where the name property was missing, remember we said in the schema that we required the name property then the request just kind of hung there, okay? And basically, we didn't know what was going wrong from a front-end perspective. As a client, we didn't know that we needed to add the name property. So there was an error occurring in the code, but we need to handle that error and provide feedback to the front-end, to the client, if you like, okay? So how are we gonna do that? Well, again, what we're gonna do is use a piece of middleware to handle our errors. Okay, so this is how our middleware looks so far. We have the request coming in, the body parts are firing, this is fine. Then the request handler is firing. This is where the error is occurring, if there is one, because we're sending some data and we're trying to save it to the database, but because the name property doesn't exist, the schema is kind of failing, the validation is throwing an error, but we're not really doing anything with that error. So the error is occurring here. We need to add some more middleware right here to handle that error and then send a response back to the client to say, hey, Okay, there's an error this is why it's not working so we're going to add in this middleware into the stack now so back in our request handler for post request right here what we're saying is ninja.create and this is where it's failing because we don't have that name property so because this returns a promise if there's an error then we can tack on a catch method which is going to catch that error right and then we can pass in a function here basically which will fire if there's an error, okay? So instead of passing through a custom function here, what I'm gonna do is set up some middleware in this thing right here, and we're gonna call that middleware. So how do we call the middleware? Well, what we need to do is pass through a function called next, and we get that right here as a third parameter. So if this fails, right, then it's gonna fire whatever method is in the catch method, which is next. And next basically says, okay, I'm done here. Now I want you to go on to the next piece of middleware, okay? So remember, the next piece of middleware is gonna be the middleware for our error handling. So first thing, I wanna just add the next method in each one of these, just in case we need it at any point down the line, because that is the third parameter of these callback functions. So now we've called the next function right here. So if we get an error from this thing, then it's gonna call the next middleware. Now we need to create that middleware. So I'm gonna save this and jump back to the index file. And we've created this middleware, or rather we've used this middleware. Then we've used this middleware. This is the second in the stack. Now we need some middleware for the error handling, okay? So let's put a little comment first of all and say error handling middleware. And then I'm gonna use middleware by saying app.use, just like we did with these two things right here, okay? And then what we need to do is pass our middleware in here. Now, back when we used the body parser, this was a package that we installed. This time around, we're gonna use our own function, our own code, okay? So let's pass in here a function. And these middleware functions that we create can take up to four parameters. The error, first of all, then the request object, then the response object, then next, in case we need to call the next piece of middleware after this. So if we now flesh out this inside, we can do something with this error. So what's happening now is we're posting this. It's reaching this handler right here. It's trying to create it. It's realizing there's an error. Therefore, this catch method fires, which says, okay, move on to the next middleware. We're moving on to this next middleware, which is here, and it's taking in the error which occurred. So let's just log this error to the console, first of all. I'll say console.log err. So if I save this now, let's make sure everything is running, first of all. Yep, now listening for requests. We'll try to make this request again. We'll send it, and you'll notice now we get this big error Okay, we get the name, the validation error, um, we get a message on the error object. You can see ninja validation failed. This is the model and it's saying that validation failed. So I'll tell you what, let's just send this message back to the client so they know that some kind of validation has failed. And we can send whatever we want back. We can send the whole error object back or just different parts of the error. We're just gonna try sending this bit back, okay? So inside here, 
we'll just comment that out for a second because we want to send something back and we'll say response to send something dot send and we're going to send an object and we're going to make up a property called error okay so i've named this you can name it whatever you want you can call it parrot if you want it doesn't really matter just logical to know uh, to name it error okay and then what we're going to do is pass back this error object that we just logged to the console but not just the error object we'll pass back the message so error dot message that was a property on this error object right makes sense so now if we save this and if we check that this is running that's fine we'll make this request again send it now we get a response at least now we know there's an error and the validation is failing so the front end can say hey okay something's wrong with the data you sent so they can go and look at it again and maybe add in the name property and retry and then it would work however one more thing here we have a status of 200 which means everything okay when actually you know what everything is not okay because this failed we're getting an error so ideally what we want to do is change this status code now typically when there's an error we use status codes in the 400s so how do we send some kind of 400 status code with this well all we need to do is say dot status on the response so we'll say dot status and send in 422 as the status code then put a little dot again for dot send so this is going to attach now a 422 status code to this response so hopefully when we receive it it's going to output right there so let's make this one more time and now we get an internal server error that's because i've spelled status incorrectly okay so save that again and try it so send now we get this 422 error which says unprocessable entity so the request was well formed but was unable to be followed due to semantic errors so now they know something is wrong with their request they've got an error message and it's all been returned to them so now it's no longer hanging so there's a simple example of how we can handle our errors and send data back to the user so they know what's going on so now we've got that under control in the next tutorial what i want to do is move on to the delete request handler to see how we can delete data from the database